This week on Distant Shores, we continue work on a custom design for a 50-foot aluminium sailboat with KM Yacht Builders in the Netherlands. In this session, we take a look at features of a Best of Air 53 and Stadship 56. We discuss the pros and cons of centerboards versus vertical lifting keels for shallow draft cruising and show how to interpret stability curves and polar diagrams, useful skills when buying a boat. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. Recently, we've been cruising aboard our variable draft Southerly 480 sailboat in Panama. This is the fourth sailboat we've owned during 31 years of international sailing, and we're about to build our fifth. Join us on the journey. Previously on Distant Shores, we did an online tour of the KM Yacht Builders factory in the Netherlands, and since then have been meeting to discuss the criteria for our next boat, which you will find in earlier videos and outlined in the description below. Owner Ewa Koi has been showing us designs KM has produced for other customers with similar features to what we're looking for in the 45 to 49 foot range. Today we're considering going larger. So what I'm showing now is a um, 53. This is a wider transom, isn't it? This is a wider transom, so this is a you see this is a, a 53 with a transom of uh, 3 meter uh, 25, the same with, with, with your idea is. They want a scoop where you can stand on. This scoop is a little bit too small, they want it bigger. Ha have a double wheel, uh, double station, pretty big cockpit. Then you have inside, you have like a settee, uh, a race salon. Uh, then you step down here, so it's a few steps extra, this is three steps, and then you're in your galley. So if you fall, you cannot fall into the galley because he is like a, a, a post or a security rack, so uh, you're, you're more in your own area. Oh uh, yeah, that's appealing. You set against the wall if, if you're cooking and the boat is healing uh, port side. Yeah, very nice. So they, they have a galley here. Then you have here a sofa or whatever it's going to be. You can sleep as well. This is 2 meter uh, 15, so it's long enough. So it could be a pilot bird. Then you have your center board again. You have here your, your, your guest room again under this bed. That's identical to the other one. Uh, you have a, a, a head. They had uh, then you have the owner cabin with a watertight door. That is a watertight bulkhead with the shower and the owner on the toilet and of course the bed. So that's another solution, more or less the, the same principle. And then you have of course your big four peak uh, for storage. So this boat has more storage because it was a request. We want a lot of storage and um, we want three cabins. So also in the back there is even on starboard aft, it's like a pipe cut in a technical storage room. This is also watertight bulkhead on this area. What you can open, you enter under the galley. And this is like a storage place for uh, food. Uh, but it could also be a, 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 a bunk bed for one person or if you have uh, some guests on board. Wow, what a creative design. Yeah. So you come down the steps through the galley and back through a little uh, access into uh, storage and there's another bunk yeah. yeah and then a twin it's like half high no it, it's like maybe one one meter fifty high so it's not full standing full standing till here but after this you have to duck a little bit and then you can um, can can sleep here as well so I mean that's that's another possibility just some examples yeah no it's mm -hmm. great to think yeah, of those good ideas to see that. both boats have the same idea of using the central place as the main salon where you can uh, steer and watch and, and uh, use the boat. So, but is this a hull, this looks like a hull that's been changed from your normal best of our hull with a broader beam on the stern, right? Yes, I'll, I'll see if I can uh, get... So the actual hull has yeah. been modified. 
Yeah, I just can't get my head around the fact that with aluminium you could actually go and modify the... Yeah, that's very appealing. ...modify the hull itself. Obviously you can't go and fill it with heavy equipment or anything because mm -hmm. you haven't redesigned every... I mean, how far down do the changes go below the water line to support the extra weight of the hull? See, there's a little bit where you can see the design. I think you see now the screen with the same layout. It, 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 you can, uh, it says version B, correct? Yes. That one we see version B, wider, okay. wider at the transom. So there's a wider transom. Um, uh, here you see the styling of the boat a little bit. It's a little bit more... Um, well, the styling we are not even working with this client yet. We're just talking about standing height, uh, sitting uh, space. Uh, uh, so we, we go to the outside a little later because the interior was more important for, for volume than the, 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 the space of the boat. Yeah, I see. What an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. So you can see here that the, the four peak is significant. Uh, oh, it's big. Yeah, it's still big. Yeah. And then that's uh, a twin uh, cabin. About uh, uh, three, three and a half meters. Th this was the idea what we generally had. It was like a sofa, but that sofa is so long you can sleep there. But you can also make like a, a little table there or a second workstation or I mean, yeah, that, that's the mix, what, 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 what uh, we don't know yet and what has to be processed together. Uh, is that going to be the, the cabin, what we saw on the, on the uh, Bestefar um, picture, like, like um, do you do something like this? Uh, yeah, those two look very interesting. Do that's something like this? Version of no, do, 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 you, uh, yeah, do, you, do you do that or, or, or do you do this? I mean, that's, that's not, I, 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 yeah, I also don't know. So that's something what, what, what we have to find out together. Right. But I, th I think this, this, this is getting, I think, not, not close, but this is the direction I think what you're thinking of if I see your uh, most important notes, galley to the companion way, scoop, uh, to workstation, big deck house, uh, master sleeping room with own shower, a guest uh, with 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 a with a small shower toilet, so um, cockpit with two wheels or tiller. Well, that's still open. So I think we have some some designs here. What 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 getting, well, uh, in the direction we're talking about. Yeah, definitely. Yes. This is this process yields a. Uh, a lot of different ideas when mm -hmm. a normal a normal fiberglass boat builder wouldn't be able to make changes like that. Yeah, just like I mean, you can even if I'm understanding, you could even shift almost most of the bulkheads inside can be shifted somewhat. Yeah, uh, I guess yeah. you want to keep that one under the mast, but but most other ones provide there's enough strength provided by the aluminium hull that you can shift mm -hmm. watertight bulkheads around inside the yacht. Versus a fiberglass boat where you really can barely move bulkheads right. at all. So it gives so much, so many options for customization. Yeah, if we talk about uh, a, a custom boat building, we say uh, the hull is the same and the rest can be shifted everywhere. Uh, if we do full custom, we say y you come up with a design and we build it. No? And, and we don't mind if the deck house is in the front of the boat or the stern of the boat. I mean, that's totally free in, in, in thinking, but of this, this total custom building is too complicated because people need help and, 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 and guidance and coaching how to build a proper boat because it's the first time you do it now for the fifth time. So you're very experienced, but most people don't understand that and don't, don't like that kind of freedom. They like to be guided and helped uh, in the design. And then a existing hull or an existing boat with uh, items is a lot better uh, for them to choose and a lot simpler. Yeah, right. well, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I know for us we have a lot of ideas from what we've done, what we like, yes. but I'm still not ready to totally start and sketch a hull. Right, yeah. I mean, I'll more sketch performance. Like I want to improve the performance over our existing keel. Mm -hmm. I want to improve yeah, yeah. the visibility from the pilot house. Probably could keep the cockpit the same and much of the galley. Mm -hmm and improve the visibility a little from here. But 
Right. I think that's going to be the easiest thing to work with. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of flexibility yeah. that comes to a process like this. Yes, yeah, you've given us some great ideas. Our, my imagination is, is rolling yeah. around right yeah. now. Yeah. I think I showed you last time um, this, did I? That's a stability curve with keel up and down, is it? This is example 445. For a uh, 49, it would be a little bit different. Uh, the bigger the boat gets, the the um, the less extreme it always is, because the boat has a slower motion, and therefore, um, um, so a 10 foot boat has always a lot more stability than a 100 foot boat, because the 100 foot stability boat has a a, 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 a hull what is what is moving slower and the way that it cans over is a lot smaller. So if you have a 100 foot sailing boat, you have a finishing of stability probably around 90 degrees. No? And by a uh, 30 foot boat, it's probably 140. So, so, th so that's, that, that's in principle. Uh, I'll show you this one. So we have here two. We have one with the center board up and down, a graph. You, you see, uh, normal you sailing always in this area, no? like uh, 30 degrees heel is a lot, you don't do normally. So it's, it's this area. So it's important, you see here the difference between this vertical line is if your keel is up and down, what extra stability it gives you. So uh, if you do it at 30 degree, it's between like 6,800 uh, uh, kilogram meter till uh, 8, uh, 9,000 kilogram meter. So that's very significant. So that's for sailing. So this is the most important item. So you see also, if you're not healing, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. So if you're sailing in very little wind, a heavy keel is not an, a big issue because in 10 knots of wind, uh, or, or no, if you don't heal, you, you don't feel the difference. So therefore, people who are sailing at sea uh, with a lot of wind, they like heavy keels. If you're sailing only in lakes, it doesn't make so much a difference. But that one has a, still uh, has a good good angle, even if you go over to 90 degrees and knock down, you still yes, have 4,000 yeah. 4, positive uh, yeah, trying to yeah. send you right by right way up again, even though the keel's raised up. So exactly. So so the the, the for sailing this is good. Uh, then if you go to safety, uh, we say if you, if you keel down, that's a normal situation. Uh, the boat almost won't tip over because it takes takes forever till she because this is the point where the boat doesn't know anymore which side it wants to go. Yeah. The, continuously turns or does it go back so that's at 140 degrees well then the boat is already like uh, like, like like it's like way over healing like yeah. like 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 over you would say over the top already yeah. so that's extremely high and the other point is if you see if you if you make the the, the area of this part now if you take that 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 area oh yeah and it take the area here that's the area what it needs to to roll over. So th there is almost 100% certain this boat will roll over very quickly because the area what's below the waterline, let me say that, below the zero, is like what area, what, what energy it takes more or less to, to, to canter back on the right position. Yeah. And that gives a lot of people a lot of secure feeling, although it will happen only maybe to zero zero point uh, I don't know percent of the people who will roll over, but anyhow. So th that's the safety part of it. Uh, and then even if you put your centerboard in, because you think or forgot to put it out, you still within the CE regulations and most of the Lloyd's regulations as well, because our boat still is in 120 degrees of center of of uh, uh, finishing of stability. So that makes the boat so safe even with keel in or keel out. Yeah, that's a very good looking curve compared to uh, even most regular boats without yeah. a swinging. 
Yeah, e even those keel boats. Even if you compared it, the red curve is quite acceptable. Right, so. right, yeah. Though she wouldn't go very well to windward with the keel up like that, but but she's yeah. very safe. So. But the red one is, 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 I think, compared to most keel boats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, like De Fours or Bavarias or, or uh, Genos or uh, Benetos. I think that's about this. Yeah. No, that's very nice to see because I know that is something we get asked about a lot with our swing keel, you know, is it stable? And how what angle and yeah. does it? Yeah. And just understanding this graph is good to uh, to show yes. to people. So yes, it is. I've very seen these graphs many times, but yeah. but uh, not not everyone shares the graphs either, so Right. And the boat yeah. shows. No, I don't understand it why they don't share it because it it's it's to understand the safety and the principle of your keel. And of course if if you if you share maybe a uh, an un 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 unbalanced centerboard, the, the, it it doesn't give you any safety. It gives you a little bit leeward uh, compensation, but that's it. Well, um, uh, so it's also maybe what do you want to sh to to show the people and what you don't want. This little shoulder, what you see here, mm -hmm. and you see the shoulder. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's that's the the pilot house. What's hitting the water? So as soon as the pilot hits the water, you get an ad extra uh, buoyancy of, 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 of volume, but once the boat uh, bring it back up. So that gives an extra uh, tendency to, to bring it back up again. Yep. Well, I never thought of that as an that advantage of a pilot house. <laughs> that's interesting. Oh yes, it is. That, that's, that's a safety because it's all air and air wants to go one direction that's up. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, that, that's a benefit. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, so that's about the centerboard. This is a speed diagram we can also make for the 49, which you can see, and it's pretty accurate. We repaired it after first seat rails and make it accurate. Uh, you can see the for a, it's even a smaller boat than we're talking about. This is the curve showing the polar performance of the boat when you're sailing, how well and what yes. wind. What, uh, what speed you'd make at which angle to the wind. But yeah. this is normally generated by the naval architect when they draw the, yes, draw the hull. Yeah. But you say you've gone and modified it after uh, with sea trial performance, mm -hmm. more like the racers. Yeah, use. we want to see how, how accurate it is to the theoretical speed. Mm -hmm. So when we have this, uh, when we start sailing, we, we measure some points and we give it back to the, the designer and they uh, they 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 uh, uh, repair it a little bit, so we ha it's pretty accurate because that's on the end what you want. You want to support people with a nice sail story, and and give them an accurate uh, figure. That's right. interesting. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen it before where people have modified and corrected it mm -hmm. afterwards. Other than racers who need to generate these for their own racing plans. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But manufacturers usually just present the designers. Right. Uh, oh, this yeah. polar is, diagram. Yeah. This is great. Thank you. So you see it's, it's about true wind angle. So 30 degrees uh, in, in lighter wind uh, we, we reach uh, really. Uh, no, you can see here. Um, you, you understand how to read them, eh? Cor uh, yes, correct? yes. Mm -hmm. no, I appreciate you describing it for our viewers yeah. too. And the angle, so you can see we reach uh, uh, 30, 30 degrees windward uh, if it's blowing um, uh, pretty hard, like 20 knots, we still make like um, s six knots uh, of boat speed. And then you see how quick the curve ends up and, and, and uh, 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 that's due to that keel. Keel down, of course. This is the system what we use. And uh, you can see here it's uh, only a little bit into the boat, no? because this is the, the, the part it's protruding. But of course, for us, it's, it's not different if we move it more in or less in the boat. The only difference is uh, the, 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 the stability point gets a little bit higher if you move it up. That's the only disadvantage. And, and the box inside the boat will be a little bit bigger. Yes. Right. This is the part we were seeing. This is the part we were seeing in the boats that was protruding into the saloon. It's just that box with the hydraulics. Right. So that yeah. was the divider yeah. into that little sitting area and the guest cabin. It would be nice to keep them under the floor, but but other than that, 
no, you want to keep it under the floor other than that it has an impact for your tankage maybe because you're taking some build space away i would not make it so high that you have to step over it i mean that that does not look nice yeah mm -hmm. uh, No, but it's a nice divider. Yeah, the way so I'm just drawing the green. The green comes down into the keel, but that's just showing the, the other side of the housing uh, covering yep, over. Yep, so yep. the keel would be disappearing in behind that. Right. That there and under yep. the floor. Right. Got it. And then you service. So this is entirely separated from the hull. So there's no, the this Dyneema line that's, there's a Dyneema line that's pulling through the, through that uh, yes. blue pulley. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the center board is like on itself, on a pivot point. And then we have exactly, we have a pulley here. We have a big cylinder here, it's a hydraulic cylinder. And this is like a line that runs like over the pulleys. Then the bow then continues to the other side. And it's one continuous line that goes from port to starboard. So it's, it's, a, it's a double line on port and starboard. You can take the top away. Now this is like a, a top what you can bolt away and the water line is somewhere here so the cylinder is about a half a meter or a quarter of a meter above yeah the cylinder is oh, oh make it a little bigger so here is somewhere the water line so the cylinder is like like 30 40 centimeters above water line so you can take the server's top this plate aluminium plate you can bolt off it's like like a man manhole and then you can service the cylinder or check it or if the line is damaged you can replace it uh, without taking the boat out of the water. Oh, that's mm -hmm. a great advantage. Yeah that's good. Yeah it looks very easy to access and service. It's a clever design, very clever. And then the big pin that holds the keel into the bottom of the, the boat, that is accessed from outside Yes, it's not a pin. It's like a, it's like um, uh, th th this pin is like uh, into the, 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 the center board. So it's a, it's a metal uh, part, but it's like a yoke. What you what you put like together. Uh, oh, I like, see. Like, oh. Uh, like from the bottom. Right. So it's not you, you, you mount it from outside the boat and not from inside the boat. Yeah. Okay. So that pin, even if it would break off, it would not damage your uh, integral part or it would not uh, be any any danger if, if if there would be something devastating happened it would not leak the boat and 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 and, and uh, well and, and make the watertight integrity stop yeah right. I see. that's a good okay. idea and serviceable that way yeah yeah in this case all of the ballast is in this movable part so this is a yes yeah everything is in there so this yeah. is yeah. aluminum yeah. and then you cast lead inside the aluminum is that how it works no it's a st it's a steel uh, a steel uh, case and then we pour the lead in we do steel because it, it, it's even stronger and uh, it's heavier and um, uh, that that's the aim to make it as as, as heavy as possible mm -hmm. yeah and then we galvanize the keel itself so it's uh, like a zinc node. It's 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 a, um, a safe material then around the aluminium, because the zinc will first eat away if there is there a problem, and then the aluminium will be sacrificing. So um, th th that you don't have potential uh, risks in the boat, because that's what you don't want. To yeah. How many? How many? Uh, how old are the oldest of these keels that you've made now? I mean, how many how many years has it been tested over? I guess I'm asking. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. I think four years. Okay. okay, so people have done a lot of miles over that time, I'm sure. Yeah, we have very little. Uh, I mean, we have done many kills before, uh, a bit unballasted, but but so far, um, yeah, it works very well. I mean, the the, the name line is very uh, forgiving because you have never an impact load on your cylinder, because if you hit the ground. The, the, the dynamo line is going to hang slack and, and when you uh, get off the ground or, or lift the keel up again then uh, it gets tight again and if you have connected your cylinder to this uh, center board every time you hit the ground you have an enormous impact on the connection between your cylinder and the, and the center board and that's the weak point or the heavy loaded point where then stuff will break off or, 
or, or, or, or damage the keel or the, or the trunk or the cylinder or uh, the centerboard. Yeah, we do that kind of exploring, so we like to be able to, to know that it will come up or will, just will not hurt up. us if we uh, bang it a little yeah, bit yeah, on the way into some place. I run, uh, I run aground like, like full speed just to, to, to test it like with nine knots. And, and it slows the bow down like in, in 12 meters to, uh, to three knots and then it gets stuck just where you are. We also ran at the ground on like, we have those basalt blocks here where you have those, those, those piers on, 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 no, to, to, to keep the water, not to pe the, you know those, 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 those little dikes? Oh yeah. yeah. And, and that is, that's like basalt, that's like the, the, the hard concrete and with our first boat, we, we, we ran aground it was like just seven, uh, six, seven knots just to see what's happened. And actually, well, we, we couldn't see anything. We saw a little dent on the steel uh, centerboard, but because it's full of lead, it's so strong and so heavy. I mean, the boat is instantly sitting still, but I mean, it, it, it didn't, didn't, didn't happen much. We couldn't see any cracks afterwards and, and did some uh, dye, dye penetration tests, but couldn't find anything. So. It's pretty uh, rocket proof. Interesting. Wow, that is really a really well thought out system, I think. Yeah, we should have made a video of that uh, crashing what we did because that, uh, <laughs> that was pretty, pretty interesting and also scaring for some people. But I said, well, let's test it because if it, if it doesn't work this way, I mean, we'll find it out later. So, uh, but. Uh, yeah, so, so the piece, so the keel itself is all, is all steel. Yes, yeah. it's a plate steel keel and, uh, um, and then it's filled with lead. Yeah, okay. So, and your question, uh, if you want to dry out uh, more uh, and more, I think um, I'm not afraid of, of standing on those rudders, uh, but we could see how small the rudders can be that we still uh, believe that the boat m steers well. Because if the rudders get too small, they don't steer anymore. And you need like dagger boards or you need like something to, to, to keep the boat uh, uh, stable on the route. Yeah? And also with a Gen Acker or a Code Zero. So um, you cannot make the boat too shallow because then it doesn't work anymore under sail. Yeah, so how, how is the Oyster? What, how does it work? It has a different kind you of... See, on, on, the, on, the, on the Ooster, let's get some pictures on. We have uh, uh, retracting uh, rudders. Oh, really? And that makes it, uh, makes it more complicated. And, and um, most people don't like the complication. I like it a lot because my boat is only uh, one meter deep. Yeah, that's what we've had on our boat. So we enjoyed that shallowness, but... The rudders didn't retract; they were fixed at one meter, which gives them less less uh, good performance in uh, slow speed in reverse and stuff. So th this is my boat. Uh, you see her sitting. This is my my girl. She's now 17, but here she was, I think, three or something, oh. two. Uh, and yeah, uh, I'll see if I get the pictures of the keel a little better. I have a Hoyt boom in the bow to keep the boat very simple sailing. You see here the the rudder. So the rudder in, we retract the rudders, and then we are uh, 90 centimeters. Uh, I hope I have some. I'm cleaning the boat. Is that the Wadden Sea? Yeah, it's Wadden Sea, isn't yeah. it? Yes, it's the Wadden Sea. Have you been there? Yeah, we sailed across. We sailed across it in 2010. On the oh, way, yeah, on the way okay, to Sweden, okay. and then we stayed for a gale in behind one of the islands, not near Shermanaku. I can't remember no, the name of the I can't island. Remember which one? It, it looked. It, the scene looked more or less yeah, like this. Yeah, it just looked like that. Yeah. And at uh, high tide, so we were sitting in five feet of water, and at low tide, we were on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So, do you see my image? Yes. Yep. Yeah, and I see there's another boat dried out there too. Yeah, that's that's also that this was in in, in uh, south of. England, I think, between uh, uh, the south uh, west, between uh, uh, Ireland and England. Oh. So here you see those rudders. Uh, I have, uh, so this is like the one with the keel with the bump a little bit under it. 
and then uh, sitting on this two rudder so that works well this is a, mm -hmm. a 39 foot boat we built for a client um, and here you see Ooster she's sitting on her belly so this boat the small one is think like one meter 30 or one meter 20 deep and we are 90 centimeters mm -hmm. yeah. so we have two rudders uh, the port and the starboard they are uh, retractable so we go from 90 centimeters to one meter 60 I believe wow. One oh, meter, yeah, one meter fifty, yeah, and uh, the middle one is like a, a, a fixed one, and that's just for the prop wash. Right, that is, I think, that's, a very that's good very idea. Handy. Yeah. But uh, if you want to do it so flat, you need a whole uh, centerboard uh, into the boat. Well, the centerboard is like a meter high, so then you're cutting really the boat in, in two pieces with like a. Uh, a, a step or a uh, uh, into the middle of the boat so I think in the design where we're talking about now I think it would be wise to um, to, to, to try to keep the the, 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 the design so that 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 the keel is still under the floor but as shallow as well as we can yeah I see what you mean I'm this is the kind of boat we've had before, and, and we're trying to improve performance yeah. over that without sacrificing the entire interior mm -hmm. just for the extra three nights of the year that we want us to sit on yeah. the beach. Yeah. So. Yes, yeah. And I think it's still pretty stable. If you see here, you have, for instance, uh, an area where there's more mud, and, and there my boat sinks in, like you see, and then the rudder sinks in. So. That, that will happen also with that little piece of centerboard if it's sticking like 40 centimeters out in a lot of the areas it will go into the sand and you stay very stable on those two rudders and uh, and and and, uh, and the keel mm -hmm. right yeah and if we build the rudders super sturdy which i think it's easier yep. to do that yep. than it is in a fiberglass boat we could mm -hmm. make extremely sturdy rudders yeah uh, massively yep. sturdy rudders and then and and knowing that the keel itself is massively sturdy as well it could it could sit there mm -hmm. yeah what you could even add uh you don't see it so good on this drawing but on um so this is my boat again um, if you do in the middle um, if you do like a piece like this that's like a it's not so good for the hydrodynamics but it's a support where the boat sits on in the middle uh, on the aft so it doesn't sit on the rudder with the load in the middle it sits like on the centerpiece and the rudders are more uh, for a, um, a support no? that it doesn't tip over right yeah. so and then stability the, load on the rudder is relatively low so that could be a possibility. We have to see how, how deep this part is because if it's too deep, it's really disturbance for hydrodynamics, but it yeah. could be a solution to make it, um, give it some extra support. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. I know that looks a lot like what we have now. That's very similar to, mm -hmm. the, to mm -hmm. the shape under this, this hull. Yeah. Although the rudders are deeper yeah. than that. This, this must be shallower. I think ours must be 1.1 1. 1. 1 or something. Mm. See, we had a boat before, like identical to this from the start, uh, was our boat. It was a 47 foot, uh, the, the, the Samoa, a super good boat, but we had only uh, uh, 80 centimeters draft, or I think or 90, and the rudders were, were also uh, 90 centimeters. And if we were going downwind with, with a little bit, you were like running to hull speed, the boat was almost unsteerable. I mean, uh, autopilot couldn't uh, keep up with it. So uh, you feel when you push the boat, and I mean, I like to push the boat once in a while when you're sailing wrong route uh, because it's stable enough. Then, then you had like hard times to keep her on track with the with the short rudders. We, we uh, later uh, uh, modified that 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 47 foot with uh, telescopic rudders, and now she's perfect. So you need to listen that the rudders are uh, as, as designers want to be because if you make them smaller uh, the, the, the basic idea of the sailing boat the sailing at the ocean is like compromising and that's I never would do then you have better like 10 centimeters more draft um, 
than like a compromised sailboat. Yeah, we right. don't. We're not fixed to one meter draft. That's not essential. I think yeah. it's yeah. it's for us. It's essential that you can wander into the shallows, and not exactly. worry about hitting, hitting a anything. hitting a vertical lifting bulb. That would be a big worry. Yeah. So, but to add another thirty centimeters, yeah, I, I don't mind that at all. I mean, w we don't want to draw over four feet, really. Mm -hmm. But certainly, the difference between three feet and four feet, I don't think it's a it's not no. a deal breaker. Yeah, no. uh, yeah, one meter twenty, something one uh, that that's I think doable. Yeah, 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 yeah one twenty, one twenty five. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not essential, but we really do dry out a fair bit, and it's a lot of the fun. Yeah, we have here two meter, uh, two meter twenty tide, so that's plenty. Yeah, but that's depending a little bit where you are. Bahamas is a little less, I think. We only have a meter tides in the Bahamas, but yeah. and it's not about drying out; it's just about being able to park when the tide goes down. And right. Mm -hmm. So even if we wander around the boat and you're still up to your your yeah. waist in the water. And it's more or less being able to go to that place where there wasn't room to sit sit for the night. Yeah, so that's what we and do. and the, the boat can stay stable, uh, stay. Yeah, just stay to be safe, safe overnight. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful boat. Thank you for showing us. Just to ask you this question again, I don't know if we dis discovered this, but this oyster boat is there another one, or there's only one called oyster, or is that a whole model? No, and might no, no, there's only one oyster. Yeah, but we haven't. See, we had a, the 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 Ooster, the forty forty seventh foot was also the Ooster in the past, and that has been sailing around the world a lot with my parents. Uh, but that was like in two thousand um, when it was now ninety ninety seven or something ninety. That's that's the one. We must have that's seen the one, your parents. That's the one we ran into then in the Bahamas, because it would have been ninety seven, I think. Yeah. That would have been our Bahamas trip. So she was Oyster and had a a bare aluminum hull, three rudders called Oyster and she had a tiller and here I'll show you some pictures of that boat as well it should be somewhere here because this just looks slightly wrong or different uh, not yeah. wrong just different yeah. than what I remember yeah. for yeah yeah but I know it was bigger. called Oyster and yeah. so if it was your parents yeah. your father invited us on board to see the boat so we've come full circle <laughs> yeah cool. back then we didn't yeah, have yeah, a yeah, southerly yeah. that was the beginning of our conversion to yes yeah. shallow draft i think Sweet we were in field. bimini weren't we we were in bimini and yeah. we were on our classic 37 which was an old sparkman and stevens design a big long counter stern and a full keel and you oh, know okay. in the bahamas we were wishing for a shallower draft yeah that's funny and so we started looking and we saw the boat anchored and went and we to ask about it and got very kindly invited on board to take a look so yeah oh, okay nice well yeah no i'm i, I he, he, he my mother's still alive but he's not alive anymore uh so this is the old boat okay okay yeah it's now called lot because it's now from another owner and we kept the name uh, so that this is the this is probably boat what you saw that oh, what I a think. great photo <laughs> that's beautiful yeah yeah that cabin top and everything yeah, looks so. like what we remember yeah yeah and this has three rudders correct and later we trans it had also the solar panels on the back yeah mm -hmm. i sailed with them quite a bit in uh, in, in in those areas yeah oh that's, oh, that's funny that's okay. really neat good memories yeah i'm sure how great that you had all that experience with them yeah yeah no, definitely yeah um, good well i think see. have we covered most of our initial criteria yeah. here i think for now i i have a, a lot of information i think it's good to uh we know a little bit direction uh i don't know a little bit but we know i think um uh, i think i have an idea where you want to go and maybe you have to rethink what you've seen and after we shared the documents and the drawings and the picture what they showed you today you can maybe come back to me and say yes uh, we found out this is the the, the 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 direction where we want to go a little bit and and then fill out the online specification what we built together and once we have done maybe one other call we can start making a sketch uh, drawing of the interior and and show you uh, what we think what fits in the boat where we talk about them Okay, oh, I understand. So, so that's exciting. how the 
the process works and I think that seems like a great yeah. way to cooperate and understand mm -hmm. and, and it's a very hear. very great service that you offer to your potential clients and especially and it feels also now that we've done a factory tour as well it feels like we've yeah we can actually get started on something that we couldn't have we couldn't have done normally with the pandemic it's f more difficult yeah. for us to fly anywhere and and uh, yet I feel feel we've been there so yes so thank you very much for making this available yeah to people. no you're welcome I mean uh, it's it's always good. I think uh, the, the the COVID is, is uh, has its good things and the bad things. The good thing is that we understand that with our traveling we should still communicate and see if we can show our boat. So that helps in this, and also it helps because a lot of our customers are pretty far away. You can still build a boat and maybe they visit once or twice and 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 still be close together and uh, and and develop this. So. Uh, yeah, I think that works well. Yes, great. well, this has been a great uh, session today. And we'll look forward to the notes. And uh, yep. I know the wheels are turning in our, our heads yeah, now with yeah. all this inspiring material and your ideas. So thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Join us next time when we meet the design team to see preliminary drawings and working with 3D animation, start to see the new Distant Shores 50 take shape. Learn more and talk to us in person at the United States Sailboat Show in Annapolis in October. Details and contact information on the Distant Shores website. Thanks for watching. Your views, likes, comments and shares help us a lot. If you'd like more in-depth information and consultation, we invite you to check out the Distant Shores Cruising Club. Membership includes early access to videos, member-only Q&As, live chats, meetups, sailing opportunities, and many other benefits to help you prepare for your own adventure. Thanks again for your support. See you on the water.